regional municipality of Niagara. The chair of the regional municipality sent a letter to uh, the uh, Deputy Premier of Ontario and the Minister of Health to echo and support the uh, uh, Correspondence from Simcoe Muskoka regarding Bill 103, Smoke Free Ontario Amendment Act, and the recommendation there is to receive. And the second item is related to the appointment of uh, Mr. Chad Richards, and it's a letter from the Lieutenant General of Ontario confirming the appointment. And again, the recommendation is to receive. Okay, thank you, sir. I have a motion to receive the correspondence. Luke, seconded by Ken. Any discussion? All those in favor? That is carried. Media releases. Good morning, uh, Denis. Welcome. Hello, thank you. Through <coughs> you, there are three media releases on today's agenda. On November 14th, a media release was issued about public health attacking medication misuse campaign, which was held in partnership with the Owen Sound Attack and Rexall Pharma Plus and Owen Sound for the campaign vouchers for free tickets were provided to participants who cleaned out their medicine cabinets and brought expired and unused medications to Rexall. The campaign aimed to educate the public that the best and safest way to dispose of pharmaceuticals that are no longer needed is to return them to any local pharmacy. On November 9th, a media release was issued to coincide with Radon Action Month. The release provided information on radon and encouraged people to test for the presence of this invisible, odorless, natural occurring gas in their homes. And finally, a release was issued October 31st to let the public know that this year's flu shot and the updated COVID-19 vaccine are both available to the general public at primary care offices, pharmacies, and public health clinics. And that concludes my media release report for this meeting. Thank you, Denny. Motion to receive the media release is Nick, second by Al. Any discussion? Questions for Denny? Helen Claire. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Through you, uh, two questions. The rate on testing, just wondering if we could hear how that's done um, for those around the board and for those dialing in on this, are the radon detectors like carbon monoxide? Uh, to how how could, could we have a, a bit of background on that? And uh, my second question is around the medication misuse program, uh, which is great. Just wondering if the information on the forms that people are required to fill out is anonymized. I'm certainly aware that one can go to the pharmacy and drop off uh, medicines and i'm just concerned that if it's not anonymized if people have to fill out a form that if someone finds medicine or uh, somebody who has um addiction uh, issues or someone within the family that's dealing with that that might want to just get rid of these might be dissuaded if they have to give personal information so i'm just wondering if we could clarify um, how the information on that form is being managed. Thank you very much, Mr. Chair. Thank you. Denny or Dr. Aaron, who would like to uh, take a run at that? Um, I can uh, take a stab at both of them. Okay. I might ask Dr. Zed about the details about the uh, second question. So for Radon, the question is about testing. Um, and, and there are um, different ways to test the historically the test would be a device that uh, would be uh, usually placed in the house in a lower level in the basement where the radon will accumulate and it will be left with certain parameter a certain distance from the wall in, in an area that's not circulating air uh, for a number of months usually three months then it will be mailed to a lab in the united states and the report would come back saying the level over the past three months. So it, it gives an indication. And usually the test will be done best during the uh, the winter months, because that's where the accumulation of uh, radon uh, happens most. Recently, there has been many tests. Some of them are electronic and they connect with the app, with the phone. They provide the update live on, uh, around the clock. Uh, anecdotally, from the use uh, or from the uh, experience from the public health inspectors in our health unit, the test result from these devices correlate with the test from the lab. Uh, however, we don't have recommendation about specific brand or specific uh, 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 lab even. So the recommendation to the public is to go to the provincial or the national 
website where they have certain providers who are uh, trusted and and uh, it's something that uh, having the test locally in house or in uh, through an electronic device would would uh, eliminate the need to disclose to a lab a certain location certain uh, individuals or many individuals will be reluctant to test for radon because if they know that the level and associated with their address can affect the for example the the um, the value of the property if they decided to sell. So having this electronic test available for a person to know and put mitigation measures without that uh, potential stigma, if we can call it stigma, uh, is useful. Um, so that's the uh, first part. If I can defer to Dr. Day about the details about the uh, campaign. For the so through you, Mr. Chair, uh, this uh, campaign uh, has is linked also to uh, a voucher for two free tickets for uh, attending the hockey uh, game. So it is optional. So if people want to participate in that uh, draw, uh, they can put their names, but it is overall up to them to put the names on. So it's not a requirement unless they want to participate in that. Draw. Does that answer your questions, Helen Blair? Thank you. It does. I, I just uh, and I'm sorry, I don't have the, the media release in front of me. I just wonder if uh, if it might be useful to clarify that in, in, in an additional uh, media release, if that's not clear in the media release. Um, it certainly raised the question for me again because of my concerns about uh, people that are using drugs in the community. It would be great if we if we did not dissuade anyone that had those drugs, especially older drugs. Um, so, so just just respectfully suggesting that um, through you, Mr. Chair, to to uh, to Denis. Thank you. All right. Thank you. Chad is hand up first, and then I'll go to Sue. Chad. Excellent. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Uh, just something for perhaps for consideration. So November is Diabetes Awareness Month, and I was just wondering if staff had any plans to do any sort of communication on um, diabetes, both in the form of uh, you know type two diabetes prevention uh, activities or localized statistics around diabetes, um, and and also kind of type one uh, diabetes symptoms. I know there's a lot of communication activity happening nationally, and I'm just wondering if there was any plans to. Uh, to do that, any localized communication on that topic. Thanks so much. Thank you, Chad, Dr. Here, or Denny, or whoever. And through you, Mr. Chair, we do we do have a list of uh, recognition of uh, certain days. I don't have a list in front of me, but uh, if if it's not there, we would absolutely. Uh, I, I'll be dumbfounded if it's not there. But we will we'll definitely add it to the list if not. Thank you, Sue. Just in response to Helen Claire's second question about medications, I've had occasion and twice to go through and take medications after my parents um, moved out of their home. We went through what the pharmacies ask is you dump all those medications into a plastic bag. You take the bottles and anything with identifying information and you get rid of that. All you're taking to them is the actual medication in a bag. And now that might not be the same in this for the attack tickets where they want some information from you. But normally when you return medication, it's totally anonymous. There is no record. You just walk in, hand it to them, and they take it. Very good. Good, good information at all. Any other questions related to the media releases? <clears throat> okay. All those in favor to receive them, that is carried. Uh, medical officer health update, Dr. Ayer. The first update, then, Mr. Chair, is the opiate situation. I'll turn it to Dr. Zayed, and I might add at the very end. Of the sure. Dr. Zayed. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Uh, so, for the update, uh, there are four components the surveillance and data. So, opioid related death for uh, the year 2023 so far is less than. Uh, like the um, like the probable ones uh, are less than 2022, which is really uh, great so far. Um, and uh, for the uh, overdoses, we are still having overdose uh, situation, but it is more uh, like with the data that we have now, it's more specific and have uh, is action 
oriented uh, with areas where there are overdoses. We have our SOS team to follow up on the event, especially that now we started a coding uh, code um, for SOS clients. So uh, the code will have uh, uh, some uh, letters and uh, date of uh, part of the date of birth so that if there are overdoses that happen with the clients, we will know them. If there are um, overdose situation, we will uh, we can follow on the post event. And if it's repeated, uh, we can follow more on, on this situation. So I think that's uh, taking us in a, in a focused uh, secondary prevention uh, way uh, through the data. Um, in addition to that, also we have more um, um, more uh, more uh, focal data on uh, SOS. They are now working on uh, like with with uh, experience now and the more time working. Uh, they have uh, uh, they have uh, kind of uh, reframing their data and and focus focus it in in a very uh, good way through this dashboard. Uh, for the prevention, uh, for primary prevention, we have already taken actual steps with the uh, uh, Healthy Baby, Healthy Children team to involve some primary uh, primary intervention from the project uh, to their work, uh, and also for the opioid uh, uh, the opioid stewardship uh, through the uh, committee in the hospital. Uh, our harm reduction uh, manager uh, would be. Uh, inter like work on uh, some primary intervention action through this committee, uh, working also with uh, with indigenous communities, uh, especially through the healthy baby, healthy children. We are now having uh, or in the process of having an agreement with uh, uh, with Sogin First Nation uh, on uh, evaluating their healthy baby, healthy children program and uh, and have some sort of uh, uh, auditing of the service and uh, improving uh, the service in terms of also adding uh, things related to uh, positive childhood experiences. Um, so that's a part of uh, prevention. In terms of secondary prevention, again, we work on uh, improving uh, the naloxone use uh, and, um, and working on uh, spreading uh, spreading the uh, the knowledge zone with more uh, agreement with organization um, like uh, police and also now with the uh, with the district um, where uh, the with the Christmas and business small business we are trying to uh, spread uh, the uh, the knowledge zone secondary prevention uh, work uh, for in terms of uh, education and training. Uh, we are uh, now uh, on the process also of alignment of alcohol and drug strategy um, uh, work, leadership and steering committee for uh, for the strategy um, to in, to have the strategy have more um, more scope on uh, on prevention um, and also an, another part of education and training is focused on drug checking services with uh, Toronto uh, drug checking uh, centers and um, and again the expansion of naloxone training. So that's my update for the period. Thank you. Dr. Uh, you want to add something? Yes, uh, Mr. Chairman. Looking at what we can do more specifically on the indigenous um, health front, um, I, I uh, had discussions with the uh, with the Nick Saunders representing the community and we're looking at uh, suggesting to the board section 50 of the Health Promotion Protection Act where there is an agreement that would be formalized between the health unit and the uh, indigenous community that that's a that will be a formal way to actually deliver services and uh, that might take some time. Uh, other strategies that were suggested is to uh, re-establish a liaison function I believe the health unit had liaison with the other boards, like the board of uh, the hospital board. There was uh, a, a member who was a board member as a guest on both boards. So that would be something that can uh, help the cause. And uh, if there are other suggestions that would come out of the discussion, could be considered by the board. 
Okay, any questions, Helen Claire? Yes, I think both of these are excellent ideas. I'd be interested in the timeline um, to to move towards a more formal relationship with our Indigenous um, partners. And um, because Dr. Ari did say it might take some time. And I certainly, if we can move forward with the liaison immediately, uh, I think that's an excellent idea. And if it requires a motion, I would be inclined to move that um, Mr. Saunders be that representative. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Mr. Chair, just to elaborate, the, the, I, I use the term sometime because genuinely I don't believe there is a time frame for those. I, in, in the province, I'm aware of two health units that have those uh, uh, sections of the act activated a long time ago, and uh, I don't know the time frame. It would be in months, if not more than a year or, or so. Uh, but that would be when that was done. Uh, we need to connect with the ministry and see how long this process would take. And uh, I can bring to the board a full proposal with timelines on it, uh, if that's of interest. Maybe for the benefit of the board, at least for myself, explain a little more what is encompassed in Section 50, please. Yeah, certainly. So Section 50 of the Health Promotion Protection Act, and I wonder, Kelly, if you can put it on the screen, that uh, would not depend on my memory. It's uh, it's it's a... Uh, yeah. It's a section of the act that would allows formal relationship between the indigenous community and the health unit. The uh, and, and that would be under the basic the health. Let me go on a tangent. I'll come back to this. The health uh, responsibility on an indigenous community is under the council of indigenous uh, community and uh, supported financially and by FINIP, the uh, the branch from the federal government that looks after the indigenous health. So it's not a provincial responsibility, it's not the health unit responsibility. However, with this uh, section, we will have parameters to work within the indigenous community because without it, we don't. We have established many a relationship with the indigenous community and we, we support the indigenous community to build its own capacity, but all of this is not formalized. This is uh, Voluntary or over uh, mutual agreement uh, uh, type of work, but it's not a formal agreement. And uh, if you can make it uh, larger, control control the plus a couple times, it will go bigger. I pull it up there for you. Otherwise, it's easy. So the section there is is very concise. Uh, the regulations that will be activated by this section is not the regulation that I've gone through or have experience with. And I don't believe, as I mentioned, many people have. And even when I reached the ministry, I wouldn't be surprised if they said we need to review our archives or uh, or be able to see what the next steps are or the time frame is. Okay. Any questions, Luke? Yeah, thanks, Mr. Chair. I just wondered, um, and maybe Nick could speak to it. Just what the, you know, this kind of arrangement. What is the what is the reaction of the First Nation to uh, to a an arrangement like this? Like I, I gather and understand through my own interactions with most of the Saugeen First Nation that there's you know there's a great deal of suspicion about interactions with. Um, you know, our local hospitals and potentially, you know, public health. Like I think there's, you know, and for good reason, right? There's a long history there of some of challenging, um, really bad behavior on the part of of um, institutions, you know, for our First Nations. And I just wondered, you know, I just wonder how do uh, how do you view a thing like this? Is this a thing that uh, an arrangement like this with a formal agreement? Is that something that First Nations are interested in doing, or that? I think that it'll have to. It, this will have to go to the table for sure in our in our First Nation. Um, again, this is all new, and so I'm also learning as we as we go down this road. I think the biggest thing um, for myself and, and that I see coming out of this is that open line of communication and that bridge building. Yeah. Um, even with the hospitals. 
there's a long way to go. Yeah. Uh, in the history that has passed through the years of our folks uh, being denied proper access. And uh, I'll just take for instance, you know, if somebody in our community, they'll go to Wired Hospital showing signs of pneumonia and the hospital will say, no, you shouldn't be here. You need to go somewhere else. You're just after drugs. Person will come out here to our own town hospital and the doctors will see them. And all of a sudden, oh, they're sick. They've got pneumonia. We need to give them proper medical attention. But if you take somebody under that's going through a mental health uh, <laughs> sort of an addiction crisis, Wyerton will turn them away right away. On town, there's nothing wrong with you. We don't have the capacity for beds or anything. And see you later. And next thing you know, the person's either overdosing or committing suicide. And it doesn't happen just in First Nations. I know that. It happens outside of the First Nations as well. But I think something like this could actually be a stepping stone to bridging and building a better future for all parties involved. And that's good to hear that it is a positive step. And I think that that's so it sounds to me like it's the right thing to pursue. The only caveat that I would add is that given all of that that you just listed and all the other issues around it, we shouldn't imagine that it's going to happen quickly, right? Or that, you know, we should take, we need to take our time with it and make and do it, do it the right way and do it in a way that builds trust. And uh, because, you know, the idea that you're, we're going to overcome those entrenched issues quickly or through an agreement is is not by it isn't it isn't realistic so i think um so i hope we will proceed with it and but i hope we'll do it in the right way and and work together and do it in, and not attempt to rush it don't be opposed yeah well i can't be opposed it has to be it has to be done in and okay. val first and then i'll go to dr zeta thanks uh, mr chair I, I guess what surprises me out of all this is in 2017 I started the process uh, on the board to try and get Indigenous representation on this board. And it's taken this long to get to have, have Nick appointed or someone appointed from there. So I'm just surprised that this information didn't come up through that whole process as we were going through why it couldn't have run concurrent with an appointment to this board. Doctor, it, it uh, definitely came and it would be in our minutes, uh, but like you rightly said, it takes years. Uh, the fact that uh, Nick has been around the table as a guest for a period of time and now as a provincial nominee, uh, he can, he, he, he's the one who suggested what else can we do. Okay. So, and, and it cannot be imposed. It, it would be an invitation uh, at best and it's best invitation from the indigenous community to us to say we want to do this and the difference would be going forward one of, one of the main differences right now nick's position is a provincial nominee so he's representing the province at this table versus in that scenario we would be representing the indigenous community it would be indigenous representative at the board dr zayed uh, so you, Mr. Chair, I agree about that formalized partnerships really needs time and work, uh, but I just want to clarify that there is good relation with public health, especially as an organization with indigenous communities. We started that in a very uh, strategic way, uh, working together so, through uh, some vaccine incident with, uh, with Sugin First Nation. We gained the trust through working with them, through uh, writing grants as well. And uh, for example, that uh, healthy baby, healthy children request came from this, from the First Nation to uh, to support them with healthy baby. So, so that came through many work uh, relations that happened uh, through the few of uh, the last few years. In addition to that, we had a very great uh, informal partnership with uh, with this, uh, with the Niwash, uh, with the Niwash uh, First Nation, uh, with Hasi Baby as well. So this is really a great work that is going, uh, and it will it will 
it will take us into a very uh, very good formalized partnership. In addition to that, we are working now on uh, the substance use um, uh, a grant from uh, the the, the uh, federal government, which is a five million dollar grant. We wrote uh, some projects uh, together as partners, and uh, hopefully we will. It, it was submitted like the last two days, and hopefully. It is inclusive and include also the first nation in that. Thank you, Doctor. Or Doctor Zaya. Nick, you had something? Yeah, I, I think the biggest okay. thing too out of all of this is is that when you're talking about uh, the FNAB and stuff like that, much of our budget is geared to the population of the reserve. They don't take into account for our members that live off reserve and are in different communities or jurisdictions. And the other part of that is, is that because they don't look at that, many of the programs are underfunded. Like if you take in, um, you take instance, uh, the wage of a person that is working in the health center in Nawash, and you take the wage of somebody that's working here and uh, the regular, you know, mainstream, it's very outbalanced um, in regards to living wages and strategies and stuff like that. And even housing and stuff, like it's all outbalanced, right? Whereas if something like this can come forward and the reserve accepts it with with Dr. Nara's, you know, mentorship and, and guidance in this and how to write stuff. This could actually literally start to hopefully balance out the scales. But I know it's not going to happen overnight. It, it, this is going to be a, a multi month trying to start to balance out these scales. And even then, I don't know if it'll completely balance out, but it's a start. We have to start somewhere in order to move things forward. And, and so when Dr. Eric brought it up, it, you know, it was an open, you know, I, I took that with an open heart to be able to hear that and to see this move forward and to be able to possibly go and sit on that hospital where it's a liaison. That, that's that's an open heart, that's an open gesture to be able to hopefully move everything, start to move everything forward. Um, I hope I explained that. Yeah. Okay. Yep. 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 That's good. So in regards to the hospital liaison, is that something, like what's the process for that? I mean, if we have a motion on the floor for Mel and Claire, I didn't get a seconder to nominate uh, Nick to be our representative on the hospital board. Sue, you're going to second that? Second. Okay. So, Dr. Aries, it's simply a matter of forwarding Nick's name to the board and uh, the hospital board, and, and they uh, would receive Nick as a guest, or is there more to it? Uh, I believe we uh, need to uh, communicate with that board and see how you can activate this mechanism if it still exists in their terms of reference. It's obviously a different board from a few years ago. and. Uh, see what uh, what what uh, the mechanism is and how we can optimize it and we get in the same communication recommend uh, or okay. in a follow-up recommendation you can recommend next time okay uh ken uh, so though i do agree with the intent of the motion i believe it is premature uh, and i would move that we defer it until we receive a staff recommendation from dr harris so that when we do consider it, that we are considering what we actually need to consider. Like the, the, the overall picture is good, but I don't want us to jump into something where we impose something on Nick that maybe isn't what he do, doesn't even want because we don't know what it looks like yet. Right. Well, so it's even a best deferral until we get a approved uh, staff recommendation. Okay. Is there a second for that deferral? Al, and you have a question on and, and I, Well, just a comment, Chair. Um, when I first started on this board, we had a liaison from the, from the hospital board here, but they were non-voting right. uh, 
member and then after that person re retired from the they actually also worked at the at the hospital so when that person retired then there was no replacement so mm -hmm. i think what being asked for here is the opposite. It's it's a, a person here going there. Yeah. So I, I think Ken's point is is very valid. We should some research done first to see just how the whole process should work okay. uh, before nominating someone to be right. Helen Claire, you had your hand up. Yes, just that I absolutely agree. Let's get the deets and uh, and move forward on this. Thank you. Okay. Doctor, so my request, Doctor, uh, my request, Mr. Chair, is to send the communication to the hospital board from the uh, uh, board or from the chair of this board, saying how can you establish this and how can we do it, and based on what we hear back from them, we can bring to the board a full uh, final proposal on this. Okay, uh, sounds reasonable. Mm -hmm. So the motion is to defer it until we hear a report back from from staff. All those in favor? That is carried. Okay. Uh, Dr. Ayer, are you finished with that particular item, the opioid situation, or for more, or do you want to move on to the strengthening of public health? For the Section 50, we, uh, is, the, is the motion for both of them to proceed to communicate with the ministry and get some more information about this? Yes. Okay. So we'll do that. The second item, Mr. Chair, strengthening public health, uh, it's a standing item on our agenda. There is an, uh, an earth shattering update just to keep the board posted. The three um, parts of the announcement, the ministry announcement, one of them was uh, reviewing public health standards. So the uh, recent communication from the leadership table uh, for public health that uh, there will be looking at que the quick wins between quotations about the change in the standards and we'll know about this early in 2024 instead of waiting for the final product of the standards at the end of 2024. So we might know something earlier so we can work with. On the second front, which is the 1% increase of funding for public health agency, we're looking internally how we can uh, adjust our operations to have different proposals to to uh, m maximize our ability to continue our services and find these efficiencies and we'll bring it to the board when this is uh, completed. And the third uh, section on this is related to the voluntary mergers and discussions with the uh, Southwest uh, health units and NIHs. It, it, it doesn't seem that any health unit is uh, or a group of health units are moving towards voluntary uh, amalgamation at this point, but we will continue to monitor the situation and communicate <laughs> to the board about it. Okay, any questions on that particular item? Not seeing any. We have a staff report on oral health programs. Or Mr. Motion. Yeah, Mr. Chair, I'll provide that. Uh, oh, okay. Update. Yeah, please. It's a report uh, with recommendation to receive general information, the key points for the national program. The uh, dental needs and demands remain high in Grey Bruce. 100% um, completion for a school screening in 2020-2023 school year, which is good news. The uh, waiting list for the Ontario Senior Dental Care has been decreased by 70% from 250 clients on the waiting list during yeah. the pandemic to uh, about 81, and we're aiming for complete elimination of this list as, as soon as we can, obviously. Uh, the Walkerton Capital Project uh, proceeds to tender stage in uh, proceed to tender stage in August, and uh, uh, we're working on the cost estimate to see what next steps are. So just in terms of background, the uh, the program has different facets. Whether one of them is assessment and surveillance, and uh, that's the uh, one that was completed 100% in the past uh, school year, uh, screening around 6,000 uh, students. The other one is Healthy Smiles Ontario and provide uh, services to uh, children aged 17 and under who uh, requires uh, dental uh, care and uh, have no other means to provide 
The other facet is Ontario Senior Dental Care Program, and we have over 700, 749 senior clients on the list that uh, receive treatment. A children Oral Health Initiative, and it's related to services uh, in the Indigenous community and uh, working with the uh, federal level or federal funding that supports the program. And uh, as I mentioned, the Walker Capital Project uh, initial estimate was was uh, different from what the market at this point uh, uh, requires, and we're going through the um, steps to see how we can address that. So that that's in general the summary of the program, Mr. Chair. Open to questions. Thank you, sir. Any questions related to that uh, staff report? Luke? Yeah, thank you, Sherry. Just wondering on the Walker project. Um, it says in here that it's it um, proceeded with the tender stage in August and then is estimated now to come in over budget and behind schedule. But I wasn't clear uh, from what you just said, Doctor, about like it's a, it's actually proceeding. Yes, I, I mean, and that um, and maybe just maybe a few more words on on the cause, the reason why it's behind schedule over budget certainly so the last three meetings um, the uh, manager of finance was providing the board with updates about this so we hired a consultant uh, management firm to provide an estimate for the uh, uh, for the costs of the project early on last year and based on it we put a request for one-time funding and that was approved by the ministry when we started looking at how the implementation would be. The estimate for cost came totally different, significantly different from the initial uh, consultant uh, numbers. So there were two ways to do this at the time in general. One is to get another estimate from a consultant or to go to market and see what the actual number is, why the discrepancy. So when we put this uh, request uh, to market there was only one request and it wasn't complete or uh, sorry one offer uh, for the pro to, to conduct the project it was not even complete and and it, it has a different number more significant even from the second estimate so again now we're looking back uh, one road is to go to the ministry and ask for more funding for this project completed or actually to put uh, a different Quest for different projects, different uh, functions to do it within the funding that we already have approval for. So right now it isn't proceeding. We're we're still trying to figure out what to do. Okay. Okay. Thank you. Any other questions? Oh, Sue, Ashley, your hand up. Thank you. I do. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Through you to Dr. Era. Are there other um, subsidized options for dental care for individuals who are over the age of 17, but not a senior? There will be uh, uh, offers, but not, uh, sorry, there will be, sorry, through you, Mr. Chair. There definitely are programs, but are not through the health unit. Not through the program we have, whether it is ODSP uh, Ontario Disability Program or uh, OW Ontario Work or, or other uh, funding uh, or support. Does that answer your question, Sue? It does. Thank you. Okay. Any other questions? Okay. Need a motion. I guess I should have had motion earlier to receive the reports. Ken and Luke. Any discussion? All in favor? Uh, it's carried. Last thing right along, and now we'll come to the financial report. Right, Jared. Where is Ken coming? Oh, no, I guess so. he's on vacation. There's a day off. Anything for us. Okay. Yeah, so the uh, summary as, as the report outlines September finances, and the Great Bruce Public Health had the deficit of. Um, around uh, 237, the mandatory program are currently covered, uh, covering $265,000 uh, of COVID cost, and 82 will be covered through the extra, uh, extraordinary funding. The senior dental program had a deficit of around 300,000, 
and the healthy baby, healthy children um, has uh, to date the survey around 50,000. And uh, the um, uh, expenses, uh, that's uh, the main item there. Here to date, salaries benefits are under budget by around 572,000. And um, at the end of that report, there are the capital projects. That's a list of uh, other dates. I wonder, Kaylee, if you can put it on the screen. Do you have any questions, Mr. Chair or board? <laughs> any questions on the financial report? Not seeing any, any motion to receive. Sue Pat or Sue uh, Carlton rather and HC, Bell Claire. Any other discussion? All those in favor? That is carried. Okay, we have a number of items for in camera. Perhaps, Chair, could we talk about the some uh, communication strategy? Sure. Before we go in camera? Sure. Would that be appropriate? Absolutely. Okay. Um, so through you, uh, I'd like to thank Dr. Eric for the uh, inclusion of the connection, the internal staff communication this time around. It's particularly encouraging to see that our secretary has a really rude sense of humor with the LME questions. Uh, but it, it left me a little bit confused because there was, uh, there was uh, a little blurb there that it was um, a communication through the, the connection that said uh, a, a grocery cart has said uh, grocery prices really suck. Uh, and, and I tried to find where it came from or if there was information in behind it uh, to support what it said because even though that is a cultural reality, uh, Canadians still enjoy one of the lowest food prices in the world. Uh, so it's it's culturally the message that we hear, but from my perspective, it was beneath the standard that our health, our public health unit provides with like really factual professional views. Uh, so I went to look on Facebook and once again, I was surprised because it's a, a great asset to communicate things, but there were a lot of posts not from, from public health, but other people that say, well, the Ontario government is blah, 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 we won't go there. But here we have uh, an organization that is fully funded, with the exception of a small bit from the two counties, from the provincial government, but on its Facebook page, there's these derogatory comments about what the provincial government is doing. So with the board's concurrence, I would I would ask that we uh, receive just a short report uh, in a future meeting regarding the communication strategy or policies. You know, how, how do you balance cultural versus clinical information that you send them? I, I, I don't want the information now because it's it's unfair to stop to do right. that. But we have a policy regarding how public health communicates in in the broader picture. Uh, that, that would be helpful for me to uh, to understand better uh, the messages. So that's I'm, I'm not sure if you need a motion in that regard, uh, Mr. Chair, or whether just it's, you can give direction to staff or well, probably a motion to bring that report back to the board would probably be helpful. You have to be clear to the staff. Yep, so I would move that there would be a, uh, um, and, and be clear, I don't I don't want like a 30 page report. It's no. just a, what's the strategy that we use or these are the policy guidelines that we have to uh, uh, to use for communication purposes. Sure. Is there a second for that motion? Luke, thank you. Any discussion? This from the staff, is there any clarity that you need provided? Like, Helen Claire has a question. Go ahead, Helen Claire. Yeah, thank you. I'm not really clear what's being asked here. Uh, so, so maybe maybe we could go a little deeper in it. Um, or perhaps I'm the only one. Yeah, maybe expand a little more. Um, well, I, I'd be glad to. It just seems, you know, on, on one hand, the uh, the grocery cart thing. I think it was cute. It's cute. 
but it, it really seemed to veer away from what I see as the professional communication strategy that the Board of Health or the public, Great Bruce Public Health uses. Because on one hand, even though everybody says groceries are so expensive, in the big picture they're not. The, and it's and it's more to it than just food prices, but but I couldn't find what was in behind that picture to to validate what it was said. So you know, I, I don't know where the where clinical meets cultural. I, I can't I don't see where that happens. So staff likely has a much better idea how they vet right. those messages. And that's that's just what I would like to see where the where the guidance comes from. Doctor? Yeah. Through you, Mr. Chair. Thank you. I, I'm not. I'm not clear what the issue is. Uh, like the you're characterizing a message or a report or something on Facebook. It will be much easier if uh, this came a week ago. We would prepare whatever it is on that specific. If you're looking at the communication strategy itself in general for the organization, uh, we we present on it regularly uh, every year. There will be something related to strategy order or the operations in and it would be related to the strategic plan that we have and it's connected to it so i'm um, um, you know for for us to put characterization how inefficient or inappropriate the communication is i truly don't know what the reference is to i don't you know i i truly don't know no, what it is no it, it, like I, I'm not offended by what has been posted, but I, my, my question is, uh, how, how is Facebook vetted? How is it? How are some posts allowed on that are, on one hand, very critical of the organization that supports exactly what we do? Like, is there a strategy or is there a mechanism to, to, uh, to leave posts? Is there a strategy to like what's what's the strategy? What's what's the the way that it's done? So I'm, I'm not looking for a report today. Like that's that's not the issue at all. I yeah. I would I would I'm offering the staff. A, it sounds offering. to me like it's you're we're looking for the social media policy. Yeah. And yeah. And, yeah. and if one okay. one one uh, exists, yes. definitely we can uh, we can provide any and all information. I just I I feel that I need to like there are many steps and checks and balances for anything that goes out or published. Yep. And I know we have two media coordinators to have that lens. Like for us to say we're putting stuff against the province or against the, I will be dumbfounded if there is anything there like this. So the, just the mere characterization as negative and we're shooting at the province, I believe it's very detrimental to be mentioned without clear example what we can to correct to correct. If, if the request is a policy for communication or the strategy for communication, it, it could be requested without that negative characterization. Again, I, 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 I'm concerned that we are unnecessarily shooting ourselves in the foot and characterizing our staff's work as negative when it's, I am sure it's not. No. And, and everything we do is supportive of the province and the county. We are one establishment. But what was mentioned now, that we are actually shooting at the province. So again, I, I will go and look with the most critical eye. But again, you know, I'll be dumbfounded if there is anything there that, that's related to that. For, for clarity through the chair, sure. I, I did not suggest for a moment that it's Gray Bruce Public Health that is making the posts that are critical of the provincial government. But when you have Facebook page, there are other contributors that uh, even though they purport to have a um, a clear, strong message regarding the provision of health care. It doesn't align with the good work that Great Bruce Public Health does. Yeah. And, and that is my question. How, is, how are those uh, external comments vetted? How are they addressed? Or how like, do we right. have a policy to uh, does somebody read them and say, no, we're not putting on them? That's, yeah. that's, like, I, I just want to understand that. Sure. Sue? So that was going to be my question. Are we referencing posts that Rivers Health Unit is making no. or that others are making as a reaction to Commenters. and what allows those posts to stand for the public to view? Right. Yeah. Right. It's a social media. Social media. Yes. Yeah. So 
I think that the request is fairly straightforward. We're looking for a report on the social media policy and how our social media um, world is constructed and allowed to stand up. When I say ours, I mean public yeah. health. Because it's my desire to support public health yeah. to, to the to the upper yeah. level. Yeah, for okay. sure. Yeah. Thank you for, okay. for explaining that it's not our own. No, 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 no. Yeah, definitely we can bring the communication policy. We, we label it as communication policy and uh, uh, a report based yeah. on it, uh, how it's used. Helen Blair, you have a question? Yes, thank you, Mr. Chair. Through you, a couple of things. Um, this was a, a last minute add on to the agenda, and we do have a mechanism for agenda items to come to the table. And I respectfully suggest that we follow that and that perhaps instead of us trying to to manage, because I'm still not clear what the member is is questioning. There was some 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 thing that was said about um, the, the price of groceries being stated as expensive, but compared to the world, they're really not expensive. Um, so I, so it seems I, I'm not clear. So I respectfully would, would ask that we follow our policy with regard to this item, ask the member to put his concerns in writing to appear on the on next month's agenda. So it will be a clear request to staff um, because I, I really am not following this. And also because we do this quite a lot where we, we sort of deviate off the agenda and I think it would be a good opportunity for us um, to take this this opportunity to stop doing so. So, uh, so Mr. Chair, I respectfully request that uh, the member bring forward something within the timeline that we have in policies to the chair in advance of the next uh, meeting, and we can address it appropriately on the agenda at that time. Thank you. Thank you, HC. I, I think the. Uh from my perspective, the report or request is simply a report on social media policy and, and how it is administrated. And uh, the motion, all that stand on the floor, it's been moved and seconded, and I'll ask uh, everybody to vote on it now. All those in favor? Opposed, if any? I'm curious. Okay, uh, is that everything, uh, Doctor? Yeah, okay, so we have an in-camera session now. Um, the uh, motion is to go into closed session to deal with the uh, closed session minutes. Um, and first of all, but an identifi identifiable individual, right? including municipal or local board employees, and more specifically, workforce update, a matter related to an identifiable individual, and an update on a matter related to an identifiable individual. Well, and I had also asked that earlier for an item to be added, uh, Mr. Chair, regarding uh, uh, solicitor client privilege. Okay. Okay. So I'm here to move that. Luke, second by. Ken. All those in favor? That is carried. So we're now back in open session. I can confirm that we only discussed those items on the uh, closed meeting agenda. Uh, we have two motions coming out of closed session. The first is to reverse reimburse board member Barfoot's uh, expenses uh, uh, that were uh, is submitted uh, to finance. Uh, who wanted to make that motion? Luke, second by. Ken, thank you. Any discussion? Helen Clare? Thank you, Mr. Chair. I propose that we defer this motion and request that finance comes in and explains why the initial expenses were refused by finance and further um, explains to us the current checks and balances that are in place to prevent financial abuse um making us aware of what the steps are for the approval process thank you mr chair okay it's been a motion to defer that is there a seconder sue pat or sue uh, carlton rather any discussion on the deferral all in favor opposed to Benning? that is carried the next motion well, I guess yeah, he's got that down. The next motion is to reimburse Dr. Ayer's expenses that were turned into. Sure. What was the what was the result of that last vote? That was uh, four to 
five to two, sorry, five to two to defer. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Uh, the next motion is to reimburse Dr. Ayer's expenses that were submitted. That was moved by Nick, seconded by Helen Flair. Any discussion, Luke? Motion to defer, Mr. Chair. Okay. Uh, pending a report for finance. Yeah. Okay. Seconder for that deferral. Again, all in favor? That is carried. So both of those are deferred. Uh, next meeting date. I understand there's a conflict with the Gray County uh, budget. <coughs> Can we leave it with, with Kaylee to uh, try to find us a new date? Thank you, Kaylee. Send us a good report. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Uh, okay, so that brings us to adjournment. Someone move to adjourn. Nick, second by Luke. All in favor? That is carried. We are adjourned. Thank you, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you, everybody. Have a good afternoon. Thanks, everyone.